Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, we have one of the shortest fasts, alhamdulillah, and cool weather. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us ni'mah in different ways. Um, alhamdulillah, we have now started reciting on the 8th and 9th juz of the Holy Quran, reciting tonight the 7th surah of the Holy Quran, Surah Al-A'raf. Consists of 206 ayats. It's a Meccan surah, and the time in which the surah was revealed is very much similar to the time of the previous surah, Surah Al-An'am. And there seems to be a sense of urgency in the surah because the Prophet wasallam has been giving the invitation to his people, the Quraysh, but very few of them have accepted the message. And it seems that these verses of the Holy Quran are now changing the direction from the people of the Prophet wasallam in Mecca to the Ahlul Kitab in Madinat al Munawwara, those who we are, inshallah, with the message being revealed, they possibly will accept the message despite those amongst the people of the Prophet not accepting the message. Uh, this surah has so many beautiful components to it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the creation of Adam alayhi salam. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَاكُمْ ثُمَّ صَوَّرْنَاكُمْ ثُمَّ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ جُدُوا لِآدَم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak about the creation of his most perfect creation that is Adam alayhi salam and all of us. And accordingly, once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completed the creation, he immediately ordered the entire malaika to all of them go in sujood, in jama'ah, all of them collectively to make sujood a sajda of ta'adheem, of respect for Adam alayhi salam, the perfect creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But... Consequently, there was one that refused to bow down. Illa Iblis, Shaitan refused to bow down. And when he refused to bow down, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, lam yakum min sajidin he refused to make sajda. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, qala ma mana'aka Allah tasjudai dhamaktuk. Shaitan, what is the thing that's preventing you from making sajda to Adam? And then look, Shaitan then says, ana khayrun min. I am better than him. And that's where it all started. The arrogance and the takabbur. Me, myself, and I. I am better than him. And then he starts making ijtihad. He starts making analogical deduction, trying to justify to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why his understanding of why he is better than Adam. He says, I have been created from fire and he has been created from clay. So clearly fire is better than clay and this is his assessment and that's why I cannot bow down to him. And his analogical deduction is not necessarily correct because who said to him that fire is better than clay? And that unfortunately led to the downfall. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala banished him. But he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for respite. Give me some time so that I can in a way seek vengeance. I will misguide from the side, from the left, from the front, from the back. I will misguide man. And then he started his journey of misguidance with our father Adam alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advised Sayyidatina, Sayyidina Adam and Sayyidatina Hawa not to go near the tree and not to eat the fruit. But shaitan, once again, he came with his mischievous plan and he, in his delusional ways, he got them to believe, our father and mother, that eating that fruit will be beneficial to you and it will maybe give you eternal life and even maybe make you a malaika. And they ate of the fruit. And that's when their private parts became exposed and they could not no longer be in Jannah. And they were sent down to earth. That's what's the first hijrah that took place. They were sent down to earth. The first hijrah that took place from Jannah to earth was the hijrah of our father Adam and our mother Sayyidatina Hawa. And that's, there's some very, very important things we need to learn from this. And this great ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us. There are other faith systems that believe by virtue of this original sin, every child is born with a sin. But Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يكلف نفسن إلا well, the great ni'mah is that we, don't, we are not born with this guilty conscience of the original sin. We are born, alhamdulillah, sinless. And that alone is the great ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This surah al-A'raf speaks about the heights. 
And it speaks beautifully about this conversation between the dwellers of Jahannam and Jannah. And the dwellers of Jannah speaks to the dwellers of Jahannam. Whilst there are people on this high platform waiting to be ushered to Jannah. And they are listening and seeing this conversation taking place between the people of Jannah and Jahannam. And the people of Jannah tell the people of Jahannam, what has been promised by Allah, has it come to fruition? And the people of Jannah say, what Allah has promised us has come to fruition and more. And the people of Jahannam says, exactly what has been promised to us for our disobedience has come to us and more. The reason why these verses were revealed to explain to the people of Mecca, time is running out. The Prophet ﷺ is about to leave Mecca for Medina and you will not be given this opportunity to be in his presence. The greatness of being his presence is about to leave you. Accept the message before it is too late. And the arrogance and takabbur of sometimes our religious actions where we get so engrossed in our ritual actions that, that this pride and arrogance comes into us and we then think we are better than others. I make my five times salah and I'm so engrossed in my rituals of my salah and I fast so many times of the year outside Ramadan and that's why I'm better than that person and I have this garb and I wear this clothes and I have this length of beard and I have this. that's why I'm better than him. This is nothing but Shaytani, because there is a beautiful explanation in the hadith of Dhul Khwaisara of the Bani Tamim tribe. This person came to the Prophet Sallallahu that a yawm in Qisma when the Prophet Sallallahu was distributing the booty. And then he says to the Prophet Sallallahu this man is looking very pious, he has the garb, he has everything. And he tells the Prophet Sallallahu whilst he's distributing the gifts, he says, I'adil ya Muhammad, be just ya Muhammad when you're distributing wa na'udhu billah without any love or respect for the Prophet Sallallahu And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi If I am not just, then who is just? Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu was next to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi He said, yes, let me sort this man out. <laughs> you know Sayyidina Umar. He's ready to take it out. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La, Umar, just hang on. This man, and this Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gives us a, an important message here. He says, this man has companions. That their salah, Ya Umar, the way they perform the salah, the ritual element in which they make the salah, Ya Umar, your salah and your companions who make salah cannot compete with the ritual aspects of the perfection in which they make the salah. And their siyam as well is far superior in terms of his outward appearance and manifestation of action than yours, Ya Umar. But despite them looking from the outside ritually perfect as followers of the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. Their iman will leave their hearts like an arrow leaves a bow and, meet and misses its target. And that's why it's very important for us. No person will enter Jannah even if they have an atom's weight of arrogance or pride. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the barakah of these direct lessons of the Holy Quran. That he makes us make the hijrah as well. We also make the hijrah min al dhulumat from the darkness of our actions ila nur to the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.